Kenya Institute for Public Policy Research and Analysis, KIPRA, was established as a public institute in May 1997 through a legal notice and started operations in June 1999. This was when it was realized there was need for a lot of um, objective and independent policy research to inform government, uh, the private sector, development partners, uh, academia, like universities, and other stakeholders, even the religious fraternity, on priorities on social or on socio-economic development, especially in the medium term, the long term. The Institute is an autonomous think tank established under an Act of Parliament, Kipra Act of 2006, which commenced in February 2007. Currently, Kipra operates under the Kipra Act of 2006. Kipra is established as a, a public research institute, uh, which is autonomous. Uh, so basically, Kipra undertakes research and uh, capacity building for government and uh, other stakeholders. Kipra's core mandate is to provide high-quality public policy advice to the Kenyan government by conducting objective research, analysis and capacity building and ensuring these research findings are disseminated widely. One of the core mandates of the institute is to communicate its research findings and communicate those findings as widely as possible. We have been mainly providing publishing services in order to get our research communication uh, messages out there. Kipra's major uh, objective or goal is to provide the government uh, with public policy advice that is based on um, objective research. Kipra's research themes include macroeconomic policy, public expenditure management, food security, tourism, devolution, regional integration and trade, private sector development, education, poverty, infrastructure, service delivery and investment. We have um, seven research divisions. Uh, the oldest five are one is macroeconomics division. This one is headed by an head of division, what we call HODs. They engage in broad areas of macroeconomics research, areas of things like inflation, exchange rate, interest rates, and they also participate in the government budget formulation process. In macro uh, division, um, our work is to do uh, research in macroeconomics analysis and to support uh, the institute in making a uh, public understand what the economic policy is all about and what we need to do to achieve the targeted uh, growth rate as envisioned in the vision 2030. The second one is the productive sector division. They conduct research in the broad area of agriculture, where we mean crops, livestock, fisheries, and even forestry and water. Another area they focus on is the area of tourism, which is an co-economic sector. The other one is um, trade. And then the last one, they engage in natural resources. We have been focusing recently on the area of coal, oil and gas, and um, titanium in Kuala. The productive division has uh, three units. One is agriculture, tourism, or environment and natural resources. The third division we focus on is the infrastructure and economic services division. We call it IESD. IESD conducts research, policy research, in areas related to housing, construction, uh, socioeconomic infrastructure like, such as uh, water transmission systems, and the transport. The infrastructure in the economic uh, services division eh, deal with the infrastructure uh, related issues and uh, these issues range from, uh, uh, from ICT, information technology, uh, communication and technologies, uh, that is one area. A second is on uh, uh, transport. Uh, transport you have a lot of issues uh, ranging from uh, 
traffic that we see on our roads, uh, safety, the fuel, uh, consumption, uh, carbon dioxide. Say a third is, uh, is energy. Energy is also in you know, a huge area that we pay attention to. So we offer policy advice to, uh, to government eh, so that the sector can, be, uh, can perform well eh, in terms of you know, uh, economics. Then the last uh, sector that we also pay attention to uh, is uh, housing eh, and construction. The fourth research division, so you call social sector division. These guys, they deal with er issues dealing with the health sector, the education sector, especially issues related to access, cost, and the quality of both education and health services in this country. The social sector division is one of the seven divisions whose main mandate is to focus on the social sector policy issues which include poverty, health, education, labor, social protection, social cohesion, and social issues which affect the country. The fifth research division is what we call private sector development division, PSDD. They principally focus on three areas of research. One is the manufacturing sector, second is the financial sector, third is the private sector, issues of dealing with the competition behavior, price behavior in this country. Basically what we do is trying to make sure that uh, there is an enabling environment uh, for the private sector to develop. So basically what we do is to ensure that the private sector uh, has a say on the public policy process. The two young divisions are supported by the Think Tank Initiative of IDRC. They are the Governance Division. The Governance Division broadly deals with issues of uh, economic governance in this country. We have been looking at issues like the police reforms, issues of uh, reforms in the land sector. Our overall mandate as a division is to ensure that um, we address governance issues and divide the government toward its uh, achievement of 2030 uh, 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 vision aspiration. We focus on four areas in our research. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, basically on devolution and uh, policy process. We work on, on uh, economic and, um, uh, uh, and corporate governance. Then the last is the trade and foreign policy division. Trade, they look at um, domestic trade, what we call otherwise internal trade. They also look at uh, export trade in terms of um, where do our exports, what, where do the, which countries are our exports going to, especially in the East African community, Comesa, the European Union, for different commodities. Uh, my division undertakes uh, research in three broad areas. Uh, one is domestic trade where we review trade performance and the uh, rules and regulations governing uh, domestic trade, that is wholesale and retail trade. We also do uh, research on international trade, where again we focus on two areas. One is uh, uh, performance of exports and imports uh, in the EAC, that is regional economic com uh, communities, that is staff African community and COMESA. And we also focus on bilateral trade and other trade uh, arrangements. In this one, we are more uh, working on a, a GOA initiative and also EPAS. Then there is the third aspect, that is foreign policy. And this one, we look at the pillars guiding the Kenyan foreign policy. In this one, we do uh, economic policy. We also have a diaspora policy. And we also do research on a peace and security policy. KIPRA management is vested in a board of directors comprising 13 members, including the executive director. Three are principal secretaries from the following ministries, the National Treasury, Ministry of Devolution and Planning, and East African Affairs, Commerce and Tourism. Two represent special interest groups, seven represent the business sector, universities and research institutes in Kenya, and the chairman. The chairman of the board is appointed by the president from the non-government members. 
board members are appointed by virtue of their integrity, knowledge and experience in matters related to public policy and understanding of management and social science with such procedures. The board operates through four committees, finance, audit, programs and general purposes. The board appoints the executive director who oversees the operations of the institute and who is also the secretary to the board. The heads of divisions assist the executive director in implementing the activities of the institute. KIPRA works closely with all government ministries and agencies and is a member of several task forces and provides analytical support to government policy agencies. In the area which is a major core area for KIPRA, uh, which is influencing policy, um, on average, uh, the Institute participates in about 25 uh, policy task forces uh, annually. And uh, this helps in informing uh, public policy. Um, in the last five years, uh, KIPRA has been involved, uh, for instance, in the preparation of the first uh, medium-term plan, uh, which uh, covered the period 2008 to 2012. Uh, we've also been involved in preparation of the medium-term plan 2, uh, which covers the period 2013 uh, to 2017. And, uh, other than that, through participation in uh, uh, policy task forces, uh, we've been able to contribute to various uh, sectoral policies, uh, including in the area of education, agriculture, uh, uh, and uh, many other sector policy uh, uh, issues. We also collaborate with other research institutions in the region. We work closely also with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. We're also working closely with the Minister of ESC, uh, Commerce and uh, Tourism. And most so, um, we've been actually uh, doing uh, blogs and also policy briefs in collaboration with the Brookings, uh, which is also an international research institution. And um, we also do media articles to inform mostly to disseminate our work as a division. We you know we uh, invite uh, these uh, government officials. Uh, we then we you know we kind of you know offer some advices so that uh, uh, we can you know make things uh, much better. And of late, we have been uh, very active in the uh, energy sector. Uh, I know uh, this sector has attracted a lot of issues eh, or the number of issues that uh, are facing this sector. Uh, ranging from you know high cost of power, uh, then again also we are seeing people, a lot of people who are, who are not connected to power. So what we are doing is uh, we do some uh, you know some uh, uh, media articles, some policy papers. The institute was deeply involved in the preparation of the Kenya Vision 2030, the national long-term development blueprint that aims to transform Kenya into a newly industrializing middle-income country, providing a high quality of life to all its citizens by 2030. KIPRA is responsible for producing and disseminating an annual Kenya Economic Report, which is the flagship publication of the Institute. The report focuses on the performance of the economy of Kenya during the preceding financial year and the economic prospects of Kenya for the next three financial years. This report is produced in consultation with the Minister of Devolution and Planning, the National Treasury and the Central Bank of Kenya. Other KIPRA products include discussion papers, policy briefs, journal articles, media articles, client reports, and workshop reports. KIPRA disseminates its research findings through a wide array of channels. These include workshops, exhibitions, book fairs, seminars, roundtables, conferences, and newspapers, among others. In terms of communication, we are expanding our channels of communication so that we can reach as many people as possible. We can disseminate our findings as widely as possible. So we are putting uh, together resources for not only now communicating and disseminating these research findings, but also trying to establish whether these research findings are making an impact. The Institute organizes an average of 10 high-profile dissemination workshops annually, during which policy issues are debated and various publications distributed. The Institute has a resource center where all its publications can be obtained. 
we are uh, in a way custodians of a lot of public policy information which we making all the effort to disseminate out there, not only to the policy makers, but to the, also to the general public. As per the requirements of the Constitution, we also provide the link for citizens to contribute to policy making, policy formulation by organizing events, workshops, conferences, where the public can, for instance, participate and give their comments on relevant policy issues. For instance, um, Every year, the Institute is involved in what we call the budget sector hearings. Here, we analyze the different sectors of the economy, invite the Wananchi to participate and also give us uh, uh, feedback or comments on any sector of the economy, how it's impacting on them, and what kind of policies are relevant for the sector. KIPRA has also established a system through which its various publications are easily accessible online through the KIPRA website. Other research publications and policy documents are compiled for various clients in government and private sector. Some of these reports are available to the public, while others are circulated to specific target groups. The KIPRA annual reports are also a deep source of information on the activities of the Institute. The Institute also has numerous unpublished research reports on various policy issues. KIPRA has a capacity building program whose objective is to strengthen the ability of officers in both public and private sector to analyze policy issues and absorb the research and policy analysis products. We have a PhD or a, uh, a training for our researchers to get degrees in uh, economics, policy analysis at a, an advanced uh, level, PhD. And this is a program that we have been uh, running for the last six years. And uh, so far, I would say uh, more than 10 researchers are uh, uh, benefiting through this uh, uh, program in uh, uh, PhD. The Young Professionals YP's program attaches 10 to 12 officers to the institute for one year during which they take rigorous courses in public policy analysis and formulation, among other courses, and hands-on training. So far, over 109 officers have been trained. On average, 75% are from the public sector and 25% from the private sector. The Young Professional Program is one of the key uh, programs at KIPRA that undertakes to build capacity for government officials uh, so as they can participate in the policy-making process in their respective institutions. The Young Professional Program is supposed to bring uh, graduates or graduates in economics or applied economics or social economics into a hands-on research practice with uh, regard to public policy. KIPRA in 2000 developed the KIPRA Treasury Macro Model, KTMM, to support the Ministry of Finance in preparation of the fiscal budget. The model has been improved over the years and has played a significant role in policy formulation and analysis. It is an economic forecasting tool and has assisted in improving the budget process through timely revision of economic forecasts as circumstances change by forecasting the likely trends of inflation, revenue collection, exchange rates and other factors that influence the economic growth rate. The Macroeconomic Modeling Program offers annual training in macroeconomic modeling and other courses to government officials and the private sector in Kenya and neighboring countries. The institute trains on average 250 public and private sector officers every year on public policy process, research methods, computable general equilibrium CGE modeling, education simulation and forecasting, among others. We provide uh, training to about 520 officers uh, annually, uh, mainly focusing on public policy uh, process. And um, this is an area where we have realized that uh, there's quite a huge demand. Uh, many people want to understand how the policy process uh, is undertaken in Kenya, uh, especially after uh, the passing of the, uh, uh, the promulgation of the new constitution and devolution. So 
Uh, this is a course that uh, we find there is quite uh, a lot of interest. Uh, some of the courses we do undertake in collaboration with other stakeholders, uh, including ministries, uh, where Kipra staff are, uh, are requested to provide uh, uh, or to give lectures on public policy process. Uh, we also collaborate with uh, our universities um, and uh, provide uh, lectures and uh, training on public policy uh, process uh, in Kenya. In 2010, Kipra started a staff training program aimed at providing doctorate training support to policy analysts employed by Kipra. It is aimed at sustaining Kipra's ability to meet its core mandate on public policy research and analysis in the context of dynamic public policy challenges. It is a component of the broader Kipra staff training and development policy. We have a capacity building uh, uh, program um, which involves uh, Kipra staff and also uh, our stakeholders both in government and uh, private sector. Um, the main flagship one is uh, the Young Professional Program, uh, which started in 2003, and so far we have trained about 109 uh, young professionals. Uh, in this program, uh, we, we involve the researchers or young professionals on hands-on research, uh, together with the custom, uh, customized training on public policy uh, research and analysis, uh, macro modeling, uh, research methods, uh, and uh, social accounting uh, matrix and uh, CG modeling. We have a PhD or a, uh, a training for our researchers to get uh, degrees in uh, economics and uh, policy analysis at a, an advanced uh, level, PhD. And uh, this is a program that we have been uh, running for the last six years. And uh, so far, I would say uh, more than 10 researchers are uh, uh, benefiting through this uh, uh, program in uh, uh, PhD. YP program is very important to me because it has made me an uh, all-round uh, researcher uh, because after graduating from, the, from Kipra, I've been engaged in various uh, projects like um, the University of Nairobi Institute of Tropical and Invectious Diseases whereby I've also produced uh, a paper on cost analysis of the uh, prevention of matter to child uh, program in a rural area in Kenya. Kipra identifies its annual research and capacity building agenda through an annual client satisfaction survey and regular interaction with the government and the private sector through a wide range of interactive programs. During uh, uh, workshops, you will find our publications available. Again. Some of them, most of them free of charge, others are available on sale. Since most of the, the, the research is highly technical, we are synthesizing these reports and publishing them in different uh, other media channels. For instance, you will see most of our uh, researchers writing in the newspapers. They are also writing blogs which we publish on our website and other international blogs of reputation. Um, we are also synthesizing most of these in terms of policy briefs, which are easily readable by the general public. Um, we are also now encouraging most of our researchers to get into social media. So a number of our researchers now are now active on Twitter, for instance. And we also have online discussion forums where they participate. In efforts to enhance partnerships and networks, Kipra has established links with local, regional, and international organizations and maintained a resourceful network of researchers. These networks have been useful in facilitating joint projects as sources of data and information and in providing capacity building opportunities for Kipra researchers. At the national level, Kipra collaborates with various government ministries, departments, and agencies, various constitutional commissions, 
the National Assembly and the Senate. At the regional level, the Institute has established networks with the African Economic Research Consortium, AERC, Secretariat for Institutional Support for Economic Research in Africa, CICERA, Affiliated Network on Social Accountability, ANSA, Macroeconomic and Financial Management Institute of Eastern and Southern Africa, MEFMI, African Center for Economic Transformation, ASSET, and Food and Agricultural Policy Research and Analysis Network, FANPAN. We also have uh, a program on governance and uh, uh, the research on governance uh, has mainly focused on issues uh, on devolution, uh, land, and uh, economic governance. Uh, so we already have a program that is ongoing. Um, we do contribute uh, to the work on uh, Africa governance outlook, uh, which we have also been working with uh, the Africa capacity uh, building fund. So we have a full-fledged uh, program on governance, uh, which we do recognize is a core area uh, given the institutional changes. The Institute has also developed partnerships with local universities, the Washington University, Hawaii State University, the Institute of Development Studies, IDS, at the University of Sussex, and the Inter-University Council of East Africa. All public universities in Kenya, we interact with them in one way or another. I can start with um, nearly all economics departments and those of political science. We, we collaborate with them. For example, the University of Nairobi, both the main campus and Kabete campus. They, they form a, a huge database of uh, our colleagues who serve as peer reviewers, especially the economics department. They form part of our resource persons for the econometrics program that we run at the institute. They also are some of our reviewers for our, some of our papers. The same with Jomo Kenyatta University uh, of Agriculture and Technology in Georgia. They also serve as uh, colleagues from there, serve as our peer reviewers for our papers, especially in the area of um, uh, agriculture, um, um, food science, and natural resources. Egerton University, they also form part of our pool, especially in the area of uh, economics and uh, natural resource management. Moi University, the School of Environment and Economics, we partner with them in different ways. In fact, some of our, their professors, they are members of our board. Maseno University, we also have um, our chairman comes from Maseno University, Professor Mukras, and we, they are also part of our network of um, researchers. The same with Masinde Muliro University in Western Kenya. We, 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 we partner in various ways in developing proposals. So I would say the all of it all, we work with uh, many universities, even private universities, we, we have tried to develop um, a memorandum of understanding with a number of them, but uh, it has not come to fruition. We have talked to African Nasrin University, Desta University, in terms of how we can work together to fulfill uh, common areas of uh, socio-economic endeavor. Kipra's strategic role in policy research and analysis and in building the capacity of the public sector to absorb the results of policy analysis and research has deepened as a result of renewed government commitment to reforms for accelerating economic growth and poverty reduction. 2014, we are focusing on um, how the nation can na navigate the national and global challenges. These are issues concerning terrorism, declining tourism arrivals, um, global financial crisis, and uh, probably more recently, the signing of economic partnership agreements. In 2015, we are going to be focusing on uh, issues of youth and unemployment. In 2011-2012, Kipra was contracted in projects worth 79.6 million Kenya shillings, while in 2012-2013, total projects gross receipt was 60.9 million Kenya shillings. The Institute's capacity to manage and implement large service contracts is well demonstrated by its past participation in the projects, some of which are influencing policy through task forces, 
The Institute has partnered with the government in designing policies through representation in policy working groups, technical committees and task forces. On average, the Institute participates in 25 of such task forces every year. These include the Annual Progress Report Technical Working Group, the Public Expenditure Review Steering Committee, the Education Policy Task Force, amongst other important national technical committees. Our division has uh, been working closely with the, uh, with the main stakeholders in transport industry and uh, we are consulted uh, in so many ways eh, when the major decisions eh, are being made in the transport industry. Since Kipra became operational in June of 1999, the value of this independent research institute has been demonstrated by the frequent use of its policy papers and involvement in task forces and working groups. The research we do basically goes to inform policy, the government policy. And I'll give an example like the EPAS work we did, which we advised the government whether to sign the EPAS, and this goes directly to impact on the, the Kenya trade relations with the EU. Uh, that is one. We've also done research papers to inform on the EAC, like the YAMO, East African Monetary Union, again also to impact on the welfare of the people in the region. And most so we participate as a division in um, uh, task forces and um, uh, technical working groups of the parliament. Uh, we've been involved in the past in coming up with the diaspora policy uh, for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We've also been uh, instrumental in uh, regional integration strategy. We've also participated in coming up with a trade remedy bill. And um, we participate in the uh, WTO, National Committee on WTO, as a division. So whatever happens, we are involved in the government. Most so um, in the region, as I said, EPAS work, which of course is being negotiated uh, under ESC. It's very critical because it informs what is happening in the region. In education, we've been able to work with the Ministry of Education and also its stakeholders in coming up with the education policy and also working on the issues of education financing, access, and also improving the quality of service delivery. Governance is relatively new as a division, uh, but we are proud for a couple of achievements that we have been able to do. Uh, the first one is uh, basically uh, contribute uh, to Kenya Economic Report. Uh, we have a governance there that reflects on the performance of the, uh, of the Kenyan government in terms of its uh, various uh, uh, aspects, uh, executive, legislation, and uh, judiciary. So we reflect on, uh, on uh, what has been happening in the last one year, and we are able to policy advice in terms of the interventions that need to be reflected on. Uh, the other thing that we've been also been doing as a division is uh, in capacity uh, uh, development. Uh, we have held a series of uh, training to government officers, uh, basically on uh, uh, governance and the policy process. The most important achievement Kipra has made is the establishment of strong research capacity and infrastructure and a strong reputation and brand name. This is a young division, hardly five years. I think we are now in our fourth year since the establishment of the, the division and uh, we've done research in those three areas, uh, most so in ESC, research focusing on East African community. In the agricultural sector we have been able to carry out a number of studies and inform policy in various issues, uh, namely one would be on food security. We've uh, been able to contribute to the discourse of how and how much food and when do people need food. And the Institute has strengthened its support, administration and financial management operations and was ISO 9001-2008 certified in October 2010 and recertified in October 2013. By its third year of operation, the Institute had begun consolidating its position as a center of excellence in policy research and analysis. Since establishment, Kipra has um, created and established and tried to maintain uh, a huge network of uh, stakeholders drawn from a different category of interests. One is government, and uh, we work very closely with um, various government departments. 
One of the Institute's projects won the 2001 Outstanding Research on Development by the Global Development Network. This was a notable achievement, considering that the competition included long-established research institutes from over 70 countries. Kipra is the place to be. It's um, now very well ranked worldwide. Uh, like last year, out of uh, 6,600 think tanks around the world, Kipra was among the top 150 best think tanks in the world. In capacity building, the Young Professionals Program has become the flagship capacity building program of the Institute with a clear calendar, selection process and course material development process. In 2009, the Institute won a grant from the International Advisory Group of the Think Tank Initiative of the International Development Research Center, IDRC, following a successful proposal submitted by the Institute and provides four-year budgetary support to the Institute. The Think Tank Initiative is an initiative of IDRC, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. During Phase 1, the initiative has been supporting 24 think tanks in East and West Africa, enabling them to provide sound research that informs and influences national policies in their respective countries. In June 2014, Kipra received enhanced funding from IDRC through the Think Tank Initiative, TTI. The Phase 2 funding will end in March 2019, coming straight after the completion of Phase 1 2009-2014 funding amounting to 138 million Kenya shillings. Kipra is doing very well. We'll uh, look to continue our partnerships, working with everybody to improve the way of life for people in Kenya and in the region. In Kenya, Kipra is rated the second best think tank. Kipra was also one of the only Kenyan think tanks in the following categories. Best Think Tank Conference, Best Transdisciplinary Research Program, Best Use of Social Networks, Best External Relations Public Engagement Program, and Outstanding Policy-Oriented Public Programs. Kipra also played a key role in developing the Economic Recovery Strategy 2003-2008 whose implementation saw Kenya's annual economic growth accelerate from 0.5% in 2003 to 7% in 2007, Vision 2030, which charts the way for Kenya to join the League of Middle Income Countries by 2030, and the Vision's first medium-term strategy, 2008-2012. Another indicator of the Institute's impact and reputation is a rapidly growing demand for its products and services. Kipra's activities are supported by the Government of Kenya, the African Capacity Building Foundation, ACBF, and the Think Tank Initiative of IDRC.